This is Cutie Clinic. I'm Jack Cush with Room Now. Cutie Clinic is brought to you by RoomNow.live, where you'll come for the 12 hours of CME, but you'll stay with a lively discussion. We have probably close to 30% of the art CME time is devoted to Q&A discussion, polling, etc., panel discussions. It'll be really interesting. Today, we're going to talk about travel guidelines with COVID. I wrote about this in a blog uh, a few weeks ago. You might want to look and see what the latest CDC recommendations are. But I wanted to talk about this because I just got back from uh, RWCS in Maui, a meeting run by Artie Kavanaugh. It was a great meeting. It was a great relief to go to a meeting. Um, you know, I travel a lot. To get back on a plane to me was sort of like joy. Um, a meeting that usually has about 250 to 300 rheumatologists at it for four days. Um, I think there was um, a little under 60 um, rheumatologists in the room. Uh, and it was comfortable. It was safe. It was good. Why? Well, uh, it was comfortable because we returned to that thing we like doing so much, which is traveling to meetings. Second, um, everyone that had to fly to um, uh, Hawaii had to adhere to the, the, the government regulations, which required you to have a negative nasal PCR NAAT test within 72 hours of arriving at your destination. Uh, moreover, all of the people, uh, all of the physicians attending this were vaccinated. Um, so there's sort of like a double protection built into that. Now, again, vaccinated with a negative uh, nasal PCR, you're pretty close to being um, protected, but you're not 100%. There still is a risk. So everyone actually kept practice social distancing. Um, everybody had their own six foot or eight foot table, it seemed. Um, everyone wore masks. Um, they took off masks when they were when they were eating and dining. They some took off the masks during the meeting because they really had a wide berth of space uh, during the meeting. Um, I think everyone felt incredibly safe at this meeting. I think it's important to start thinking along these lines and start instructing your patients. I, I spent time today talking to two patients about what. Um, they should be doing as far as getting out. You know, they've they've not left the home. They are older. They um, don't go to restaurants. They're afraid to shop. They're you know, and I think that you need to get certain things out there. That things are changing. As long as you're practicing the rules, and you're and you're basically controlling your environment, meaning avoiding high risk situations, you're probably going to be safe. What's a high risk situation? Do you want to go to the grocery store? On Saturday morning when the parking lot is full? Probably not. Um, do you want to go you know, to a concert or a basketball game with 15,000 other people? Definitely not. But can you go walking outside, outdoors, where there's you're walking by yourself and you're social distancing and you're not um, stopping to talk to people? You don't need to wear a mask and you can certainly do those things. I've told my patients that I think restaurants are safe. I think that planes are safe. I think when you're sitting at a restaurant, it's like sitting uh, in your own seat with some space uh, on the plane. You're sitting with someone or across from someone who you know, and you have a wide berth and whatnot, and you take off your mask, you eat your meals just like at home. The, the risk at restaurants and airplanes is really going in and out, congregating, paying for the check, um, going to the food court, letting your guard down in those situations where there's high exposure risk. The planes, there's very few episodes of COVID that's been documented on a plane. Um, it has to do with the spacing that's there. Not many people are flying. And again, the, um, the, the, the uh, filtering of the air um, is at a higher level than it ever was before. I think that, again, uh, these situations are fairly safe. I guess I bring up this case because I think there's a change that um, uh, is going to evolve here. Certainly, we should be recommending all of our peers, all of our, um, our co-workers, all the healthcare workers to get the vaccine and do the same for our patients. You know, the more we get to 300 million people in, 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 vaccinated in the United States, the closer we're going to be to herd immunity. I think it's also wise to, uh, after you're vaccinated, to still practice the same measures that got us to where we are today, and that is masking, double masking in certain situations, um, uh, obviously um, social distancing, 
uh, avoiding congregate settings and washing your hands frequently. Uh, again, this is the way out of the hole, and these practices can remain in place while we liberalize some of the things that we can now do. Come to Room Now Live. You can come live. We're going to have a small crowd there, probably the same as RWCS, about 50, 60 people. There'll be a lot of space. There'll be social distancing and masking. Or you could watch us virtually and sign in that way as well. We'll see you there.